Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Today I want to talk about how to build a step-by-step -step study plan for learning languages. Remember, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe. You can click on the bell to get uh, notifications. Come and join me at Link, where I learn languages. So, a study plan. I think for many of the things that are important to us, for we want to achieve success, it's often considered useful to have a, a routine, a, a study plan, some kind of a, of a set of activities that we feel compelled to do. So, um, and I'm going to talk about how that applies to languages. I think the biggest thing in a study plan is that you want to develop new habits. All right. Now, I've said many times that language learning is a matter of, of attitude and spending the time with the language. So we want to have uh, habits that reinforce a positive attitude, that give us a sense of success. And we want to have habits that keep us with the language at the task. That's the kind of study plan that you need to have. And the, the kinds of things you need to do for a successful study plan for languages is very similar to other activities that we would like to, you know, do like getting in shape. All right. So little things, for example, just on the subject of, of, of people sometimes say to me, Steve, you seem to be quite fit uh, for your age. Uh, what do you eat? How do you, you know, exercise? What's your routine? So, you know, throughout my life, I have done, I have always, you know, been jogging, exercising, playing hockey, playing tennis, keeping active. I try to eat you know, healthy food. I don't overdo greasy, heavy, you know, I always eat healthy bread, this kind of thing. Well, the same with languages. I, I wanted to add too, I recently uh, got an app. It's called something about, I can't remember what it is, but it's it's an H-I-I-T, high intensity, intensity interval training app. And every morning, seven minutes, I do whatever they push at me in the way of an activity. So I'm prompted to do this and I've now got that as a habit and I feel better because every morning for seven minutes I do this series of exercises. So anything like that can be very beneficial. Uh, I am in the habit of going to Link for my language learning. So people are going to complain. I always promote Link, but I do because that's what I do. I get up in the morning, I go to whatever course I'm on. Uh, I go play the course audio and while preparing uh, breakfast, I will be listening to that course. This is then going to push me to read because there inevitably are portions of that lesson or several lessons that I listened to that I didn't understand. And of course I can either shuffle uh, the lessons or simply go through them in order. Typically if I'm well along, in that uh, course, I'll shuffle them. But if I'm still trying to learn new words, I'll go in order. So that's a habit that I have. So I think that the study plan in, in language learning is more about your mindset, the habits you create, rather than spend a half hour here, a half hour there, because so much of language learning is subjective, it's emotional, I think it's important to engage in the activities that we enjoy doing, that we feel we want to do at this particular moment. So I have found that listening tends to trigger a lot of other activities for me. So it's very simple for me. I just turn on the listening. Now I want to look up, you know, read what I listen to, uh, look up words uh, and that kind of thing. But another thing that's important in terms of a study plan is to make sure you surround yourself with the resources that you need. So uh, obviously content. And I've mentioned many times that in an initial period that is going to be sort of repetitious listening to relatively simple content with a lot of repeated, you know, vocabulary, especially high frequency verbs. At a later stage, you're listening more out of interest. But you have to find this content of interest. You have to find the content, this repetitive content. So you, there is some work to be done there. Uh, I find it useful to buy one or several starter books because it's nice to hold a book in your hand. Uh, you have to find some grammar resources that you can refer to, whether it be online or in a book. 
So part of a study plan is to make sure you surround yourself with the resources you need. You're going to need uh, an MP3 player. You're going to need, um, obviously, uh, internet access to go and find these resources. Um, that's got to be part of your study plan. In fact, I end up spending a fair amount of my sort of time that I devote to language learning looking for content for Persian and Arabic. It's difficult to find interesting content at my level. Much easier to do, say, in English or probably in Spanish. But part of your study plan has got to be to prepare yourself. I, I will often go and get content and, and make sure I've got it imported into Link so that I have it ready, so that when I want to go and listen, I've got enough content in front of me. So part of your study plan has to be devoting enough time to preparing the content you're going to use. Uh, grammar resources I mentioned. Also, at a certain stage in your language learning, you're going to want to speak more. And if you're not, if you don't live where the language is spoken, you're going to have to find some online people to either exchange the language with or tutors. And I've mentioned italki, which I have used. We have tutors that think, but you've got to find someone to speak to. And eventually, again, to my mind, in any sort of plan of, of language learning activity, the amount of speaking you do is going to increase over time. Because in the first period, you have to kind of break the code of the language. You have to get some familiarity with the language. People often say, well, if you don't know anything, how can you get started? Well, that's why you deal with very short bits of content where you have access to an online dictionary. I wouldn't want to be looking up every word in a dictionary. Uh, I find Link very convenient in that regard with our many stories, lots of repetition. Slowly you get a foothold in the language. That's the first stage. But at a later stage, you're listening to things that are more interesting. And at that point, you want to start speaking. You want to start speaking uh, because you want to try out what you've learned. You'll find out that you aren't able to recall a lot of the words that, that you know passively. So you have to get in there and start speaking, uh, uh, speaking without worrying about the mistakes you make. And so that speaking is got to be part of that study plan. And what I find particularly useful when I have my sessions with my tutors at Link is that I get a report from them of 10 or 15 words and phrases that I had trouble with. And I have this as a record going back a year, two years, I can always go back to um, a lesson that we had and things that I struggled with. And of course, my tutors record this for me. So that's also very, you know, that sort of, that way of using your online, uh, uh, you know, discussions or sessions with your tutor is also very useful. So I guess my approach to this idea of a, of a study plan is that it's, it's not so much sort of very specific, you know, 20 minutes there, half an hour there, because that's going to vary depending on your interests, what you like to do. Some people maybe like to go through Anki. I think you want to be guided by, by what you enjoy doing. Uh, and because that's going to keep your attitude positive. It's going to keep you liking it. It's going to keep you spending enough time with it. So it's more a matter of preparing yourself, uh, trying to develop good habits, trying to develop habits that push you into the language, push you along until you find enough compelling content that that's now starting to pull you along. And then at some point when you start speaking, be prepared to make mistakes. Recognize that, that it's only in making mistakes that you're going to get better, that you're eventually going to make fewer mistakes. So, you know, people have asked me for this. What's a step-by-step -step sort of plan for language learning? I, I'm not sure. I think that I've often said that language learning is more of a fuzzy logic thing than a step-by-step -step thing. Uh, you might want to go to one of my videos where I say that language learning is a subjective process. I've also done a video on the stages, you know, the different stages we pass through in our language learning. I think both of these videos might be worthwhile to go and have a look at. So thank you for listening and good luck with your language learning. Bye for now.